people who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 1. Please, if you like our videos, share and subscribe. Our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. I worked at a public forest. One day we had someone report a dead animal on the side of one of our trails. A few of us from the front desk hiked out to see what it was. It looked like a giant piece of liver, maybe. Just a pile of smooth red meat, no blood around, and it was wrapped up in a t-shirt with some coins scattered around it. We called our rangers to go check it out, and one of them was pretty sure it was a placenta. The weird part is, you have to check in through a front desk. So someone either snuck a placenta liver in or gave live birth, removed an organ on our trails. We never got an answer on what the pile of meat was, how it got there, or why. Account 2. I work on North Sea oil rigs on an ad hoc basis off the coast of Scotland. Wouldn't say anything was particularly paranormal creepy, but it can be very unsettling. Weird place. Fog can come rolling in out of nowhere, and other rigs you can see off the sides can disappear in front of your eyes. Sometimes you can't see the walkway 6FT in front of you, or if you're walking over grading, you can't see the sea below your feet, about 60 main hours down from feck to sea, but you can hear it, albeit muffled. The fog can roll in over the course of a few minutes too, so a perfectly clear day becomes pea soup. You can also feel the rig moving, swaying on high winds, rough seas, even though it's a fixed leg platform. Very unnerving to feel your office swaying when it shouldn't be. My last trip was my first ever night shift, and I found it particularly unsettling as you've got the background noise of the plant, but I walked around the whole rig without seeing another living soul for the whole shift. Usually there are about 130 people on board, although smaller rigs have smaller headcounts. Usually once a trip I'm hit by this awareness that you are just very isolated and in the middle of nowhere. Most rigs I've worked on are an hour's chopper ride from land, so if things go wrong it can escalate very quickly. Account 3. During college that was located away from major cities, the woods were all around us. That being said, there was a highly rated trail, the Loyal Sock Trail, which was about an hour drive from the university. I invited a friend to come with me as he had never been on an extended backpacking trip. A 50-mile trail that we intended to backpack over the four-day weekend. I am an Eagle Scout who has spent countless hours in the woods and went on backpacking trips consistently throughout my college experience. As many have said before me, you get used to the minor spooky things happening. Coyote howls, raccoons in the middle of the night, even the occasional unknown noise. The scariest thing to find in the woods, however, are people. We were about 20 miles into the trail. And being Pennsylvania, where the underbrush and trees line the trails pretty densely, I always walk about 100 meters off of the trail to reduce the chances of me disturbing people. People disturbing me especially in the early morning when I choose to sleep in. Following that same strategy, my friend and I go out of our way to be in this amazing spot, a good ways off of the trail where it would even be difficult to see our flashlights from the trail. This spot was on a peninsula where a creek met a river, meaning there was only one way into our camp and only one way out. We start a fire, cook our food, and drink some, but not enough to get either of us drunk. We put the fire out about midnight and head into our individual tents. All is quiet. It is the fall semester, so leaves are on the ground. The moon is brightly shining through the bare trees, and the air is cool. The only noise is the occasional time when I would hear my friend turn over in his sleep. Then I hear the voices. The voices sounded very close for being on the trail 100 meters away. I check my watch 3 a.m. Who hikes at 3 a.m.? We are 20 miles in. I slowly get out of my sleeping bag, slowly unzip my tent, only to see my friend peeking out of his tent in the exact same fashion. He quickly moves his finger over his mouth in an exaggerated hush signal, then use the same hand to frantically motion towards the way of the trail. Then we see them, four adults, three men and one woman, walking directly towards our camp, no lights illuminating their path. They are walking silently at this point. Only one of them has a backpack. An impossibility for the long hike they were 13 of the way through. Being a long trip, you bring wood-cutting supplies to chop branches into smaller branches to burn. For me, this was a survival knife. Grabbing the knife, believing it is my only way of defending myself, I am more disheveled than I ever have been. Especially knowing that a knife is barely defense at all. 
These people walk into our site, sit down by our extinguished fire pit, and just sit there for what felt like an eternity. My friend speaks up and asks what they are doing in our campsite. Without answering the question, they ask if we have any food. Having packed as lightly as possible for the long trip, we had only a few extra Mountain House MRE-style meals. I grab one out of my bag and toss it to one of the men. In rapid succession, I ask why they aren't using a light, if they need help finding the trail, and why they are hiking so late. They respond with the following. We don't use lights. We know where the trail is. It is better to hike late at night. Unnerved at this point, my friend asks them to leave. They respond by asking if we want to light the fire and hang out for a bit. No, we do not. They grab their bag, get up, and leave without speaking another word. We watch them leave and take shifts making sure that they didn't come back. Needless to say, we both got very little sleep that night. When the sun rose the next morning, we finally got real sleep. By the afternoon, when we woke up, it all felt like a weird dream of sorts. The only evidence was a fuzzy cap that they must have dropped that I have to this day. I have never had something as weird spooky as that happen in the woods and hope to never have it happen again. In the eight years since that trip, I haven't been back to the Loyal Sock Trail. Account 4. I do a lot of stream work, so I spend time out in pretty rural areas walking streams and rivers. Once my co-worker and I were working in a more urban environment and came across what we initially thought was a body, which of course triggered oh shit from us, but it ended up being a firefighter's dummy that had fallen down a hill. We felt pretty dumb. Other notable things include a small grave in the middle of nowhere for someone's dog, pretty sad, and a stuffed rabbit with shotgun shells placed where its eyes should be, a mannequin very purposely placed in a chair in the middle of the woods, and lots of little random altars. I also did work in Myrtle Beach, what a hellhole, and accidentally walked into an inhabited homeless camp. I was peering into a stormwater grate, when I looked up and saw a homeless person standing in his shelter, staring at us and saying nothing. I felt like I was trespassing, so we quietly left. Account 5. Used to be a supervisor for a janitorial company, and a couple of times a week I had to go to a middle school and clean their hallway floors and gymnasium with a Zamboni-type vehicle that mopped and scrubbed the floor. When I was there, I had the whole school to myself. Used to get finished quickly and go to the library and read while eating my dinner. Well, one morning after being there, I get a call from school security and they want me to come in. When I get there, I see a police car too. Uh-oh, I think. They ask me a few questions like, Did you notice anything out of the ordinary or strange while you were here last night? No, I hadn't. Usually have headphones in. Security then shows me camera footage of someone breaking into one of the classrooms while I was riding the Zamboni not far away. I was there for another two hours. Nothing was stolen. But the worst part was they didn't have footage of the person leaving. They didn't go out the way they came in, and police had to sweep the entire school. Never did find out what happened with that one. Account 6. On our drill ship that was built in China, we noticed on the drawings there was a room. We went to look at it and couldn't find an entrance, but the spacing was obvious there was an extra room. It might not sound so creepy unless you've been in these shipyards where two things are known to happen. Stowaways, although I doubt it in this case, but also hundreds of workers at any given time following orders blindly. So we confirmed that the room had all six sides, yet not a single weld on the outside. There is only one way this could have happened and I'm sure you're starting to get it now. They must have welded from the inside for this room and then realized they had no way out upon completion if the gases didn't kill them first. It's extremely heavy around that room. People say they hear things. I have definitely. This isn't some old ship either. I rode this ship from China to Amsterdam after completion and then the maiden voyage to America. I guess it happens quick. Account 7. When I was 15 years old, I was doing my 4 a.m. newspaper delivery round on a bicycle. I was driving into the garden of this one subscriber where I saw two guys with flashlights looking through the windows of the house. I was a bit in shock and just said, good morning, guys. They were just as much in shock and an awkward silence followed. I tried to break the silence by asking if I could pass them to deliver the newspaper through the door. One of the guys said the person living in that house did something to his family and they took it as an opportunity to get away in their car that was still running. When they were gone, I rang the doorbell at the house to tell them what happened and they should keep an eye out. 
Account 8. We were wrapping up for the day in northern Canada. I am fueling up the side boom. I'm all by myself at this point because I was tired of listening to the laborers whine of the cold, so I told them I would take care of the rest. Think bulldozer with no blade but a giant metal boom on the side that we use to raise and lower pipe. It's February, so pitch black. I keep hearing some weird sound. I can't quite hear it because the pump is too loud. I search around a couple of times and see nothing. I get in the truck and take off. Drive past the front of the side boom to see a cougar sitting on top of a dirt pile 15 feet away. The damn thing was just watching me there and probably could have ended me without me even realizing it. I've never seen a cougar in the wild before, and it's hard to understand just how big they are and how powerful until you see one up close. That thing leaped off the 6FT pile and probably didn't touch ground for 1520FT. It's terrifying to think something so big and powerful could just be sitting there deciding if they want to make you dinner. Account 9. I'm not sure this counts, but I'm a teacher at an urban public school and was at work late grading and getting ready for the next day. Time had kind of flown by, and before I knew it, it was 7 p.m. I start packing up to leave in a building that is, in theory, locked and empty besides me when our Alice alarm goes off, indicating an armed intruder in the building. I am one alone two young three freaked AF because I am absolutely not ready to fight a gunman over my lesson plans. I book it out of the school and dive into my car, hearing the alarm blaring the entire time. I peel out of the parking lot and can see in my rear view the alarm lights still flashing and debate never going back, cause fuck that Lomeo. Turns out they were doing routine maintenance and didn't send out an email to the teachers. Account 10. My mom used to live in a small town in the Cascade Mountains and worked as a forest ranger. The creepiest thing that happened was when the oldest male ranger kept hitting on her and trying to get her to come home with him. Not very out of the ordinary, but many years later after she'd left the town, she found out he had been convicted of manslaughter and had killed a young female ranger right before she got hired. She would have probably been his next target. Account 11 I'm a little late to this thread, but I hope this doesn't get buried because this story still haunts me. I worked as the county historic preservationist in southern Appalachia, working on the buildings and properties the county owned. One of the benefits included with my job was living on site at one of the historic properties. The historic house was an imposing brick mansion built in the 1810s, and I lived in a small caretaker's house about 20 feet away. This was in the backwoods, so to deter trespassing and vandalism, the county had built an eight-foot-tall fence around the entire five-acre parcel and put barbed wire on top of the fence. I mention this all just to show it was basically impossible for anyone, or anything, to jump or climb over the fencing. One night after working late at another property, I pulled up to my entrance gate, let myself in, locked it behind me, and then drove the 100 yards down the gravel road to my house. There were no lights on the property, so I could only see by my headlights. As I turned my car around the corner of one of the outbuildings and parked it, my lights shone on a thing that I still have a hard time describing effectively. It was the size of a deer, but with long, spindly legs and long, shaggy hair. Almost like a taller manned wolf, if you've ever seen pictures of one of those. That alone shook me as there was no way something of that size should have been able to get through or over my fencing. What follows is absolutely true. I got out of my car to get a better look at what the hell the thing was, and as I opened the door and got out, the thing took off running away, not on four legs, but on two. I literally watched this thing raise its back up, stand at full height on its back legs, and sprint away. I absolutely freaked out at that point, grabbed my mag light and my shotgun from inside, and tried to find the thing again. There was no trace, no tracks or anything. I have no idea how it got in OR out of my property. I didn't sleep at all that night, just sat on my couch with my shotgun watching my front door, hoping that whatever I saw didn't come back and burst in. I cannot explain what the hell I saw that night, but it still raises the hair on my neck every time I think about it. Account 12. My oldest brother used to work the overnight sprinklers on a golf course. He took me out one time just for fun, and as we were driving uphill on a fairway, a figure of a lady appeared in the headlights at the top of the hill. My brother steered a little to the left of her and kept driving right on by. I stared right into her eyes as we drove by, and she stared back. Her eyes glowed like a cat in the night. As soon as we were out of voice range, I asked my brother, 
What the hell was that? He calmly responded, Yay, she lives on the golf course and likes to terrorize the workers from time to time. I usually see her out here once a week. All right, cool. Account 13. I've been fishing out in the Gulf of Mexico where they have some oil rigs. This rig wasn't being used from what we knew, so we would get pretty close to it to fish for Red Snapper. While we were out there, we could have sworn we heard screams of a woman over and over. It was some shit. But the explanation was the wind making the noises as it blew through the rig. Well, that's what we were told, but it totally creeped us the fuck out. Account 14. I work as a polar bear guard. As in, I escort people across tundra and mountains and protect them from polar bears. I once saw a snowman totem with reindeer antlers coming out of his head. It was deformed, full of bullet holes and rather creepy. Account 15. There was one time when I was going to the gym at six in the morning. Because, oh, it's just to the gym, I wasn't going to bring a gun. Then I got an alert on my phone saying a bear was in the area. So I decided to stay in bed and eat Maltesers. It later turned out that the bear was on my route to the gym at the exact time I would have been walking down without a gun. And it was dark and snowy, so I would definitely have been an entree for the bear. That was off duty, though. On duty, there's not really been any close calls. Just the occasional, Hey, look, everyone. There's a bear way over there. Have a look through my binoculars. Also, just be a bit more alert. The rule is that if it is within 300 meters, I prepare to shoot it. If it is within 100 and coming towards me, that's when I really regrettably have to shoot it. I don't want to shoot a bear, and so far I haven't had to. I hope I never do.